on this computer. Thanks for reminding. Uh, so welcome everyone once more. What is uh, Flex Grants, Flex Alumni Grants? Flex Alumni Grants is an annual program funded by US, a Department of State, as I've uh, mentioned, and administered by us. It's a program that helps a Flex uh, alumni build new possibilities to grow within the community uh, and build new communities. Some possible projects include community service projects, as Delmarod mentioned. It could be something like uh, raising awareness, raising teachers' knowledge of English, raising uh, literacy among uh, students or pupils in the high schools. Projects to promote community involvement, like um, helping people to get interested in voluntary services. And also professional development activities like learning new things that are connected to your career. Uh, also projects to promote the knowledge and understanding of English language and US culture, maybe like uh, organizing some book drives or um, let's say even if like you don't have English language, uh, let's say original books, you can still promote uh, various like um, US department uh, approved sites like for learning English or uh, um, let's say downloading some podcasts um, and like helping people and pupil, uh, students, your peers, your fellows know about more US culture. Initiatives where alumni share skills that they learned while on the FLEX program with others. So these are like the, uh, what is, what could FLEX alumni grants be given to? Also, um, travel and professional development grant. It's, it's a grant up to $250 to support professional development opportunities, including attendance at and travel to conferences. If you're traveling somewhere, attending a workshop, that are relative to your field or relative to, for example, learning something uh, connected to some professional development uh, for your career. Individual grant applicants who demonstrate in their proposals readiness to share their experience with others like Guzal, she um, applied for uh, Udemy courses and she got this, uh, let's say, fi uh, financial uh, support, the grant from Flex Alumni Program. She has learned um, on how to um, be a coach, learn how to coach people on different levels. So she has organized a small coaching program for herself, uh, which is for free for Flex Alumni. And that could be uh, let's say an example to, uh, for the demonstration of uh, sharing experience with others in her community upon the completion of the grant. So applications will be accepted and reviewed three times per year. So just remember it's January, February, which is right now, April, May, and July, August. You can apply three times in a row. If you get like rejected in January, February, this doesn't mean you cannot uh, apply in April or May or July, August. I mean, if you even like apply three times in a row and you can get three times in a row, all the grants, if you are eligible and if you get approval from uh, Flex Alumni Program Administration, let's say. So far, any questions, Delmarad, Zuhra? No. No, okay. It's clear, yeah. Clear, great. So next, if we move on with next slide, is project grants. What is um, Delmarad Usmanov is interested in? It's a, a scholarship, it's a grant uh, up to $3,000 to support a group or individual up to 250 bucks. If, you, if you're doing that in a group, Del Morada, it's $3,000. And if you're doing it yourself, it's three, $250 for the project. Um, it should fall within the goals of the program. Not all parties participating in a group must be flex alumni. Just remember, you the other one sh sh doesn't have to be a flex alumni. It could be USG alumni, Fulbright, 
FLTA or T, Susie, I don't know, you grad, um, Muskie, anyone. So, but the grant recipient, the grant recipient, which who could be you and at least one other member of the group must be Flex or Yes alumnus. Um, ap applications will be available online from January 13 up to February 13. So <clears throat> it's next, that de deadline is next week. So grant recipients are announced in May and June. So now if you apply, you will, uh, if, uh, you will get the notification that you win or not in May or June. The application will be available online at as.americancouncils.org. So for more information, contact Flex or Yes Alumni Coordinator, which is me, to receive more information. If that's like clear, I'm gonna move on with eligibility criteria. The Flex and Yes Alumni Grants Program are funded by ECA, that's Educational and Cultural Affairs of USA and administered by American Councils. Proposals may be funded in whole or in part. Just remember that if you are doing a project, it's Flex Program's decision to uh, fund it partially, like in the beginning, and then give the money after you complete the course. I mean, uh, you might say, uh, okay, I won this grant for $3,000 and they are just, you know, transferring money for like about $2,300. Uh, I need uh, other $700 like to complete my project. But that's like, um, that's, you know, that's the part, the 700 one will be of course covered and will be transferred to you. But then after, upon the completion of your project, if a flex program decides so, I mean, this is not the, the, the moment where you'll, where you'll have to question this or like make a debate about this. So you need to understand that each, a grant is unique and each one uh, gets like the funding 100% or 70% or 50%. That's the decision of the program, <clears throat> which is like, I mean, all programs, uh, all projects will get the 100% funding, but then will it be split up or like the whole, it's the decision of the program. So eligibility is in order to participate in this program, Alumni must be successful participants of the program, which is like all of you are successful. Be in compliance with two year home residency requirement following the program, which is like, yes, we are here all the time. <clears throat> Update their information in the uh, alumni database, which may be done at the American Council's office or electronically. So, um, the last one is like a least necessary and we are here to help you with this information, but mostly um, uh, up update the information section is like an internal thing and um, it's not a big deal. So grant application procedures, access the application in this portal and complete the registration. Start grant application by including information about your project, complete project proposal, which is very important. I mean, people um, sign in and then in the last minute, they like try to like complete all the fields and then they understand that they had to develop their proposal later on, um, which is a big deal. I mean, the program needs to understand what is your project about? And if it's valuable, it's ready and always ready to fund it. So just be careful with that. Project timeline should be more or less accurate budget and upload resumes of pro uh, project leaders and other project members, support letters from partner organizations and supplementary materials. They, they all should be present. They all should be added and attached and real and realistic and not like tentative. This is like, this is someone who I will be working with hopefully. No, it should be like clear and understandable who is who and what is what. <clears throat> Submit the complete grant application package and track the status of the submitted grant application in this portal. So you keep on like saving on your application on this portal and then coming back to it each time to develop it. So you got like four days. If you haven't applied yet, you got four days and you need to hurry up. Financial procedures, to get the money, each winner should fill in the confirmation form 80%. After the project is done, 
the winner should fill in the 20% confirmation form. If it's an individual project, the winner should fill in the 100% confirmation form. Did you get it? No questions, right? Okay, Nuruddin is here, so I'm gonna admit him. Let's, uh, I'm gonna let him in to, to just, you know, maybe we'll move on later. So if that's like um, individual grant, you sign the 100% confirmation form. If that's a project grant, you will sign the 80% confirmation for, form. And then after it's done, you sign the 20%. So um, next, some people keep coming in, uh, even if they're not Flex alumni. Next, uh, advice from Flex alumna Guzel Sultan Hajayeva. She will now um, share her tips on how to develop a great successful application. I'm gonna mute myself so that you can have the floor totally on. Thank you so much, Dilnaz. Hi everyone, I'm super happy to see everyone and share my experience with um, Travel and Professional Development Grant. Um, I uh, had a, I was very lucky last year to receive it twice. I received summer and uh, autumn one, I think. I think this is how they're called. Um, Anyway, um, uh, what happened, the background of the story uh, to share with you is that I found myself in February in Uzbekistan when Corona was just starting and then Corona started and I couldn't basically come back to Japan because of everything. Um, and then I had a lot of time uh, which I could use uh, in different ways. And I was always uh, very passionate about uh, coaching and I'm also HR manager right now. So I uh, saw this grant and thought that this was a great opportunity to pursue something that I'm really interested in. And I also saw that a lot of people um, were having difficulties emotionally as well with Corona, not just, you know, with the um, physical health, but emotional health was a lot of people were uh, struggling emotionally as well. And I think it's still continuing right now, but last year was pretty um, challenging for everyone. I think resilience was really needed um, and still is needed this year. So I thought, you know, uh, why don't I learn these tricks and then help uh, people in community, uh, alumni and Flex, Flex alumni, other programs alumni, and also just people in my community. Um, uh, and by my community, I guess, I mean, people who live in Japan, have been in Japan, studied in Japan, live now in Japan, or came back to Uzbekistan. Um, so, um, Basically, uh, I spent about uh, seven and a half months last year in Uzbekistan, and this was the time when I was actually uh, doing this. And my grant was uh, about coaching uh, human resource business partner um, grant um, courses, and also appreciative inquiry courses on uh, Udemy and Coursera. Coursera. I don't know if you guys have heard about, uh, you probably have heard about those. Um, one good thing about Udemy is that uh, there are courses which are like $200 each, but from time to time they get crazy discounts. And I uh, found the courses that I really needed at that discounted uh, time, which I was super lucky with. So I took like four courses at the same time. Um, uh, so going and the next uh, grant that I did was kind of based on this one. Um, there are coaching cards, which are visual aids that um, you can use uh, talking to people about different issues in their life, which help them open up and look at the things from different perspectives. So I also um, got grants to use those cards and I've been using them uh, in my coaching sessions with Flex alumni as well. But anyway, this is a short story about me. Uh, now I wanna give you my advice on how uh, I think your application could be uh, successful. So before application, um, I advise you to think as if you are the person who is giving this money, right? So if you think like that, you can decide if what you are writing or saying is enough or not enough. Um, basically, uh, my thinking is that people who give you grants do want to give you grants, but they also need to make sure because this is taxpayers' money, they need to make sure you can achieve this project and you project is also realistic and you can get something out of it as well. So whenever you're writing your grant, try to ask yourself questions as if you were checking this grant, right? And then uh, if you're answering all the possible questions and if it's on the paper, 
not in your head, then um, I think your application uh, would be a good application. The next one, and I think this is one of the most important things, is clearly explain this grant's potential impact on you, your personal development, and your community. How are you going to pass it on to others? Right. So, for example, for me personally, coaching has been something that I've been really passionate about for the last couple of years, but I never had actually time, to be honest, to, to pursue it further. So um, I thought this was a great opportunity for me. And also as an HR, I think this is one of the emotional intelligence skills that I think are um, becoming even more and more important these days. So uh, the what I got from this course is enormous, and I'm also super happy to pass it on. And I already started some different projects that I wasn't um, thinking of, but thanks to this course as well, I got more, um, I guess, knowledgeable to, to, to do different things. So um, in your uh, applic application, make sure you write very clearly what is gonna be impact on you, what do you see the impact is gonna be, and also in the community that you're gonna work with. So the next one is the clear timeline. Um, I'd advise you to put um, everything in, many, in like a lot of details. So from when to when are you planning to take courses, if it's courses like me, right? And what do you plan to do afterwards? And also, uh, how do you plan to prove that this was completed, right? Like, is it website or leave a link for courses? Like in case of Udemy and Coursera, for example, you can just put a link and whoever is checking can just check if the price is accurate or not, right? So um, if you're doing something different, uh, it's still very important to show a proof um, because I also think if it's in Uzbekistan, for example, and it's difficult for you to show a proof of the price, um, we have uh, regional uh, like uh, Noza, for example, and the Noza are also in Uzbekistan, so they can check prices as well, right? But um, if you do something in advance and show them that you prepared, this is the price and this is the proof that this is the price, it's going to be easier for the person who is checking your application to, um, to see that it's reliable application, I think. So... The next one is also kind of related to the timeline. Um, schedule uh, in the time that you get mm, the time that you get before the grant because you're not going to get the answer right away. So, for example, uh, for May 13, uh, my my first deadline was May 13. I think I applied on I submitted my application on May 10, um, and then I got result on June 4. So, as you can see, it's about one month until I got. Uh, the answer that I actually got the, the grant, right? And for my application, the, the next one, uh, August 13th was the deadline. I think I also applied around August 10th, but then the result was on September 28th. So you should also um, uh, count in the time that is required for you to get money. So once you are, um, once they say you're confirmed, your grant is confirmed, it doesn't mean that they're, they're gonna send you money right to that day right there there are like documentation and stuff you have to uh, send them documents from your bank sometimes in uzbekistan i think you guys know banks take a lot of time to get your things sorted out like getting information i i was there for a year last year i had really fun time with some banks so um anyway my the, the bank that i uh, asked to do a wire transfer was in japan so my case was a bit uh, easier i think but still i got uh, the funds on June 24th, for example, right? So for the for the first one. For the second one, um, they actually uh, bought me the cards, which was really good. Uh, it, was, it was very convenient for me, but uh, it really depends on your case, I think. So uh, I also advise you to communicate all the time um, with, the, um, with, the, with the people uh, in charge. So the next one is, um, I, especially in Uzbekistan, I would advise you to check with your bank about overseas transfer from the US so you can include bank transfer fees in your budget proposal. Um, and the reason why I put this because I didn't know that banks can take some amount um, from the uh, from the transfer. And in, in case of Uzbekistan, it's a bit unclear. I did check last year, so it was, you know, a little bit unclear. In case of Japan, it's still some amount, but it wasn't as big as with Uzbekistan. And in case of Uzbekistan, sometimes it's up to 10%. So I'd really, really advise you go to your bank and check it and include that in your budget proposal. So you don't have to pay more than you actually wrote in your budget proposal, right, basically. Um, Delnoza, could, could I ask you to move to the next one? Mm. 
So this one is advice for after confirmation. And I uh, decided to put it because I think it's a good idea to um, have this in mind uh, while you're doing your project. So uh, imagine you got the grant, congratulations. Um, once you get it, uh, I advise you to keep all the receipts, receipts and make screenshots of everything. Um, also exchange rates are important. I just submitted my report for the grant. So uh, it took me some time to figure out what was exchange rate on that day. Uh, so if you do it in advance, I think it's easier. And also in Uzbekistan, if you're gonna exchange uh, money, I think uh, it's a good idea to put to get like a screenshot of exchange rate or something because in Uzbekistan exchange rates change like every day, every week, I think, right? On Tuesday. So um, also uh, for my case, for the courses, uh, there is a proof that you completed them like certificates or badges. Think of your way of, of proving that you completed your project, whatever it could be, right? Um, in the report, they also ask for the proof of impact like photos, for example, um, photos of the event that you did. Um, in my case, uh, I did a, a seminar about HR, not seminar, it was a, a business business lunch or something like that about a human resource business partner. And also um, uh, I did uh, coaching sessions, but they were private coaching sessions. I, I said that I'm gonna provide confidentiality, so I couldn't take any screenshot, screenshots of that. But what I did is I asked them for feedback, online feedback, and I just took a screenshot of the feedback form without showing people's names. So I kept confidentiality, but I just uh, uh, proved that this actually happened and people are giving me feedback about uh, the process. Um, Another thing, and I think I mentioned this a little bit, and sorry, here's a typo, but stay in touch with program officers and communicate to them if you have some difficulties or need to change something. So every, every change that you have to do to your budget or to the timeline, you, you have to get approval um, from the uh, program officers. They're super nice. They are very uh, understanding and like uh, they, they really want to work with you. Um, so I really encourage you to, um, Talk to them early if you if you need to change something or if you need help with something. Um, uh, in my case, when they send confirmation uh, for, for receiving grant, they also send the report form. They said, so for example, I was receiving um, grant in say May, right? For example, but they said you're going to have to write this report. Here's the link, and you will write it like two weeks after you complete the project. I really advise you to check that. So you will also have an idea of what you need to submit. So during the project, you're gonna be doing those things and gathering those documents that you need to submit to prove uh, your expenses, to prove that this actually happened and to prove the impact that it had on people and also on you. There, is a, there are some questions as well asking about impact on you. And so, uh, so you can write there in a bit more detail, but my advice to check that in advance so that you know you have a right mindset, you frame your mindset in the right way so that you can um, prepare um, for that in advance. Cool, I think this is all from me. Um, if you have any questions about um, travel and professional development grant, um, I know it's called travel, but uh, last year with Corona traveling was pretty um, challenging. <laughs> so in my case, it was just professional development program. Um, but if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, Delmarod, you're muted. I can see you raised your hand. Can you hear now? Okay, you said communicate all the time with the people in charge. Who are these people, locals or people from Washington? Yeah, sorry for not being clear. Um, basically, um, person in charge will send you an email saying, congratulations, you won the grant. In my case, it was Hannah. Uh, I don't know who will be in your case, but uh, after she wrote that she wrote that email, I sent her email back. So this is what I mean by communication. Don't disappear, basically, right? You don't have to email her every week like, oh, I co completed this this week. I completed this this week. What I mean by that is when she writes to you, get back to her saying, I received it, I'm doing this, you know, don't just let it be without any answer, right? Um, and another reason is, for example, uh, my project was initially um, due in December. So my timeline was that I had to submit it in December, but there were some reasons why I couldn't. So uh, 
when she checked in with me and asked about uh, how is your project going, I did email her and uh, she was very understanding. They were like, okay, let's uh, prolong it a, li a little bit, uh, a little bit more. So um, I think this is what I mean by communicate with them. And did also I answer your question? Uh, we are also like um, very happy to um, answer any questions or concerns uh, while completing your application or implementing your project or anything like that. I mean, you can rely on us. And if we do not know the answer, we could reach out to the responsible people out there in, in Washington, D.C. and seek, uh, let's say, support or help from them. So no worries about that. Uh, one, one more question. <clears throat> uh, can, can you hear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Okay, okay because um, you also mentioned bank fees for the maybe to wire the money. Um, do you do you receive the cash? I mean, like some that somebody do, do those people send the money to you, or do they directly pay you, for example, for the courses? Mm -hmm. So. Um, uh, what happened with me is that I paid for the courses by myself, and then, uh, and then yes, they uh, there was a bank transfer to my bank account. So they give you a form where you submit all the details about your bank account, right? Mm -hmm. um, because my courses were like there were four courses on Udemy, one course on Coursera. There were like a lot of different things, you know. It's uh, I, I think it's easier for me to purchase them and then show them receipts, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I think if it's uh, uh, like for some reason, if it's easier for you for them to purchase it on your name, maybe it could, could be communicated. I, I think, uh, you know, if you have difficulties, if you communicate with the NASA, for example, or um, with the American councils, um, they will uh, try to find a way for you to help. Um, by bank fees, what I meant is, um, what I found out, for example, is that uh, in Japan, at least, when you are receiving some money, um, for every hundred dollars, they take like uh, ten dollars or something, right? Which I didn't know before. Um, but actually, you know, in my case, they didn't take that ten dollars. But I think in case of Uzbekistan, it's even more complicated, to be honest. I've yeah. sent money to Uzbekistan a couple of times, and I think it's not just ten dollars. They take like ten percent or something like that. So, anyway, what I mean is check that in advance so that you can add that to your expenses. And usually if you find something, you can put like a screenshot of it, you know, take a picture of it, or if it's on the website, put the link where this is written that this is gonna cost you this much. So you can also include that in your grant expenses. And um, to add to what Delnoza said, I, I asked Delnoza a lot, to be honest, even about these grants, because, because I had no idea. It was my first time applying and she was really, really helpful. So I uh, thank you so much, Denosa, for that. And I yeah, do yeah, really recommend you to welcome, welcome. talk to them. Welcome, welcome. Do not worry. I should, uh, you should not worry about a thing about this. <clears throat> so because each bank has a, its own intermediary bank uh, in the Europe, which your money comes transfer from them. So it's like um, each bank, even for example, Asaka Bank, uh, I don't know, uh, Asia Alliance Bank, or Capital Bank, or Halk Bank, uh, Milli Bank. I mean, they all have their own different percentages of how much money they require from the bank transfer. So you need to find that out today. Go to your bank and ask how much is the percent that you take from the intermediary bank account. So <clears throat> I think you need to like first open a bank account and then ask all the necessary questions to be safe so that you know while you're com completing your application, you know and you're completely sure that when, for example, $100 comes in, it will be charged, for example, let's say um, you will have $91 on your hand. So you will have to request nine more dollars to receive, one, let's say, $100 in your hand. So it's like the net price, well, whatever, say, whatever yeah. to say that it's a true, clear um, amount of money that you'll get, you, you'll receive from the transfer. Mm -hmm. Any more uh, questions regarding um, the financial processes? Um, I think it's it'll be like pretty much clear once you uh, get the grant and then they will guide you. 
on what to do next. This is the first step, next step, next step, next step. And wh whenever you're confused with the next steps, you just like email us or let us know that what is this step? I'm not sure. So and we will find that out for you or we will guide you through this, like call your bank and ask this, this or that. This number means this and that. So, mm -hmm. Nurudun, any questions? Like we got like some crazy person here who I, owns I, I, I businesses. But, uh, He's so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, uh, welcome. I don't have any questions. Yes, please do. <laughs> if you are applying for for some professional development opportunity, um, it's like much easier than the project grant. Uh, not meaning that project grants are not possible. I mean, every grant is like, just has its own guidelines. But then for, for individual grant, let's say it's like for yourself, it's easier to like apply and then fill in the, uh, the um, let's say fields and complete it. For, for the project grant, you need to find um, a partner who is a USG alum or a flex alum. So, <clears throat> yeah. You mentioned three different deadlines for the <clears throat> development grant. Uh, is the project grant only once a year? No, project grants are travel and professional grants, project grants. I mean, the Flex Alumni Grants timeline, as I've mentioned, are like um, January, February, uh, uh, April, May, and if I'm not mistaken, that's uh, August, September, or let me let me have a look for you. Earlier you mentioned July, August. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, three times in a row, it's like um, you can apply all three rounds and you can, and there is a possibility you can get all three rounds uh, accepted if you are eligible and if your projects are worthwhile. So, yeah, pretty much that's it. And the Nozzle, please correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that um, if even if you're taking some course, some professional development course, that's very expensive. That's like way over two hundred fifty dollars, right? If if for example it's like four hundred dollars, mm -hmm. then you can still apply for two hundred fifty part of it, and then one hundred fifty will be your own responsibility. But still, my, my understanding was that you can still apply, um, and one hundred fifty dollars would be your own responsibility. Am I am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say that my professional development, let's say education course uh, costs $500. I'm going to cost share this. I'm going to pay myself 250, but then the other part is I am uh, hoping that I will get the funding from Flex program, uh, which then I will pass on my knowledge and experience, or let's say uh, skills learned from this course to let, let's say 10 Flex alumni during like three weeks of uh, doing some webinars. This is just an example. Yeah, you can still apply even if that's like um, more than 250. Just what is meant here is that they will only fund up to 250. The other part is on your, your own responsibility. So any more questions? I think people should be like, <clears throat> Lots of people don't know this professional development opportunity, and I think they 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 really need to uh, find out more, learn more, and apply because this is a great opportunity for us, like to learn new skills and also like maybe even uh, earn a specialized diploma in some field. You refresh your knowledge, earn a specialization diploma, which is also like some kind of a privilege for you to then in the future you'll be using that opportunity to show off your skills or your diploma saying that, I mean, I've used this time um, effectively learning online courses and I've gained this and that. And I've shared my knowledge with, with uh, Flex alumni or maybe with general public. Um, and that was, you know, really nice. The, the point is that 
you learn something and you pass it on, which makes your uh, learned knowledge even more beneficial for your own self. Like you learn and you repeat yourself, you say it out loud, you present it, which makes you, uh, which makes the memorization process even better and like efficient. So that's the whole point. And people need to um, take that advantage. So, um, um, just, yes, please. Uh, well, just an idea, Kirt, and I wanted your opinion on that. Um, earlier, um, Guzal, you mentioned different courses. I wonder if TESOL, you know, might be one of these to apply for the grant. What do you think? Why not? So I uh, can. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Nasser. <laughs> Thank you, Guzal. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi, Dilmarov. My name is Noza Suyarova, and I'm program manager at American Consuls in Uzbekistan. Um, first of all, thank you so much for the great presentation and uh, Dilmarov for your questions. Uh, I mm -hmm. highly support your interest in TESOL certification. Um, however, I also wanted to let you know that uh, the grant for the TESOL, uh, uh, sorry, the, the TESOL certificate, it costs somewhere around $2,000, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. of course, you can apply, but the maximum, let's say, professional yeah. professional development will be given only for two $250. So, yes. the rest of it mm -hmm. would be, for example, covered by you, and it's a mm -hmm. tremendous cost share if you can prove that you are actually, for example, going to pay for the rest of it yourself. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, when you are saying this, this is a, yes, it's a professional development opportunity, but then you need to prove how you're gonna implement it in your life. How it's gonna benefit, for example, the community that you're serving. Uh, could you please remind us, uh, are you an English teacher at the moment? Uh, well, not officially, uh, I'm an economist, but I have been an English and math and English teacher for almost a decade. In a, in a school or university? No, 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 private, private center. Ah, a private center, okay. Yes, because I was thinking, uh, I was thinking because we have another project with American consuls, maybe you have heard of it. Yeah, yeah, ESN. Speaking, yeah, English speaking nation. Yes, but unfortunately it's only for the teachers who are involved within the- Yeah, I'm aware of that. Yes, so um, again, for TESOL, no restriction. The only, the only, let's say, you know, question that it would be, it's the, the 250, the caps, uh, mm -hmm. the top. Yes, yeah. I understand. Yes, and Guzal, if you, if you have anything to add, please. <laughs> I think you covered it all. Thank you. <laughs> Also, uh, this is a great opportunity. Zuhra, if you have any more questions like to ask from Guzal, she has used the professional grant. Yeah, it's very interesting, actually. Uh, I would never think that you could use the, you know, 250 for uh, something that the skill that you could um, acquire. develop. Yeah, acquire and develop. Yeah, and then share it onto the community uh actually it's a good idea for me as well but uh as you said it's just a couple of days left before this one finishes i mean the applications close. no 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 not a couple days four days which is february yeah, 13 today is the uh, february 8 so it's eight yeah well so five days let's say it's est yeah. time so which is a bit like different for australia yeah, um, in in one hour we'll we'll have uh, February nine, nine already. So. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, I still have like four days left. I yeah, guess. which is, which is fine. I'll just have to I will log on uh, with, to the link that you shared and then just uh, try to. Oh, I was I was gonna ask actually, uh, how many people they um, could get the grants the for professional development. Because you said 250, for yeah. example, like how many people would could actually get it? Like how they would grant it for maybe 10 people, 250, or does it? Well, um, for Uzbekistan, each cycle 
um, we get like three or four people. Um, okay. Yeah. So we have like not so many. You can, I mean, if, if it's concerned with the competition, no, no, yeah. no problem. Let's say go ahead and apply. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just have to go through and check the, the courses will actually um, will have that amount of money because here I think it's a bit more expensive. Uh, you know, why, why, in Uzbekistan. Sorry to cut you off. Why we <clears throat> actually invited Guzal for this webinar, for this Q&A, is that she's very good at finding out what are, what are the uh, suitable courses for uh, professional development opportunity. And she's using effectively uh, many, many different platforms where she could, you know, advise which one sure. is where. Oh, for example, okay. um, personally, I've used also Coursera. It's a great platform to use, and you can download a certificate, which costs maybe various dollars. Not sure. Um, it depends on the course. And Udemy is a very also much comfortable platform where you can study various things like even like photography, graphic design, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then the certificate costs only like 50 bucks not sure mm. each one is okay. different so um you complete like eight hour or ten hour course and then you earn a certificate oh. for like 100 bucks let's say and then you pass yeah. on the skills what you yeah learned. with the webinar yeah, yeah. so and that's good really yeah that's a good idea yeah if you could share the noza if you could share the those two platforms in our uh group maybe that would be yeah good. yeah, yeah. I, I will send the links Names. to the group um, All right. No problem. The Thank noise, you. if I could add, um, you know, one of the things about Udemy is that uh, sometimes you just check a course. Um, well, the good thing is that it's a lifetime access. So you watch it once, and then if you want to watch it again because you forgot, it, you can watch it again. It's not like monthly su subscription, right? Basically. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, and also, sometimes when you log in, like it shows you like $200, $500, something like that. And then you can actually just Google Udemy code or something, you know, Udemy coupon or something. And sometimes you can oh. find coupons that you can use that will make it like, you know, really more affordable. And also, oh. um, I think I'm just g g giving you some tricks and stuff, but Udemy, um, the people who teach at Udemy, they also usually have their own websites. And sometimes their prices on their own websites are a bit more affordable than on Udemy. Oh. So you can like kind of track back like that. Coursera as well, uh, if you don't need certificate, you can uh, audit some courses. So you watch it, all the, you do all the assignments and you watch everything, you still learn, but you just don't get certificate at the end. And that's usually free. So um, I think the good place to start is to figure out for, for yourself what you want. Like for photography, they have a whole bunch on Udemy, really. And you can also watch some courses in advance before you sign up. Like they give introduction and part of the courses so you can see if this is your style or not your style, you know, like sometimes, honestly, sometimes just they're just boring lectures. I, I hate that. I, I'm more into like, you know, let me do things to learn. So you can kind of choose that. And um, my another point about like four or five days left, um, I would advise you to just go in today and fill out the parts that you can fill in, right? And just write, don't like limit yourself, just write whatever, yeah. because it's not gonna be submitted. It's just gonna save it. And tomorrow you come back and then you get a bit clearer, you know, like you, you come back with fresh ideas and you can edit it. And so if you do it like two, three days, actually on the day three or day four, you usually are like, okay, now this is good to submit. And it's mm. actually really, really simple. It's not that complicated. The only, the, the first part and the last part, I think is more of like, where are you now, what you did, which year flex you are, you know? It's the second and third pages that are all about this information, you know, like uh, what's your grant proposal? How is it gonna impact? So this is these are the places you're gonna spend most time on, you know? But once you fill out everything else, you're kind of like, okay, I'm done with that. Now I have to only focus on this thing. So don't get uh, disencouraged, if that's the word, uh, because of the time limitations, right? Like uh, I would advise you just go and just, type it in today and try to find courses that you like and that are good for you. And then try to see if you can find some special, you know, um, discounts and stuff. Like in my case with Udemy, for example, when I was applying in May, they had discount only for May. Uh, and also because of Corona right now, a lot of platforms are offering big discounts. 
yeah just yeah. because it's you know a lot of people are home and a lot of people just lost you know their not full income but you know stable income they're giving a lot of opportunities for people to be able to like uh, um, find a job basically right like improve their skills so I think now is a good time for online education Learning. to be honest yes mm -hmm. I think Gozal uh, shared very very nice tips and helpful useful tips with us uh, I would also highlight here the purpose and the impact of your project. Um, for example, if you're, uh, Zuhra, if you're choosing like uh, to boost up your, let's say, photography skills, um, yeah. you need to highlight what would be the impact um, after, uh, upon com completing your course, to which extent uh, this will be like um, useful in your community. Like um, maybe you would want to um, do some small project with children in your community uh, on how to, let's say, capture, let's say, nature. Or you could do a project, um, you could offer free, let's say, um, photographs for, let's say, family shots on, like on nature, whatever. I mean, this should be like something that someone will uh, get benefit or learn something from you directly after completing a course. I mean, it should be clear uh, on um, what you will be sharing with other people after completing this course. I, th I don't think this should scare you um, in oh, any no, no, no. sense. I mean, you could find a purpose and you could find a benefit in anything. Like if you just think, about, uh, think a little while and maybe brainstorm with yourself, talk to yourself saying like, what do I want? What do I want? How will I implement this? I'm sure you'll find plenty of answers. And uh, as Guzel mentioned, this is like a great opportunity. You could be like, you can find creative ways to find impact on the society. Yeah. So pretty much it. I, I'm, I'm not eligible. If I was eligible, I would apply <laughs> and, and earn some. <laughs> Yes. Can I ask one slightly off topic question? It's basically statistics. Uh, you mentioned each cycle in Uzbekistan, you receive uh, three, four applications. Um, for example, last year, how many alumni from Uzbekistan received this grant in addition to Guzal? Um, uh, I uh, if think that's, that's, uh, that's less than 10 people, which is uh, Gozal and uh, some more people who received travel and professional project grant. Uh, and some people received, uh, let's say, um, GYSD grant, but then they didn't get the chance to do it. But I know that Akmal Safarov, he is Flex Alumnus 03, and he's in the group as well. He has received a travel grant where he used the funds to travel to Italy and uh, had the chance to let's say just to clarify to travel to italy not for leisure you know yeah, like not yeah, for yeah, tourism yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. he, he had um, uh, a conference he is a nuclear scientist so he yeah. had a co conference on nuclear science that he uh participated in and so he applied for the travel grant grant yeah. so if you have, let's say, a conference maybe in Kazakhstan on teaching TESOL, for example, right? Enhancing your, for example, TESOL or English language skills, um, you can apply for the travel grant as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that should be, it, it, it doesn't really have to be even like outside of Uzbekistan. If you have something going on in Tashkent and you, if you don't have funds like for taxi, for train or for, for plane, <laughs> You can apply and say, I'm going to Tashkent to participate in two-day conference that is dedicated to, uh, let's say, developing a teacher uh, organization skills with like in Hayat residence, hotel, whatever. And then, you, I mean, this is a reasonable place, reasonable conference after where you will get um, some refreshing skills or let's say knowledge. Uh, this could be also an option. I mean, it doesn't have to be like, outside of uh, Uzbekistan. And also like like we mentioned uh, the online platforms, probably in your case, Del Murataka works best saying that you will be sitting at home but learning great stuff um, and passing on that stuff, uh, maybe where you're teaching your kids, your students, um, whoever, I mean, like Andijani Flex alumni. 
uh, that's um, one of the options. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. um, I think I think uh, we've made like main points clear, and yeah. we are always happy to answer your calls and your messages, your emails. If you ha uh, have any like concerns or comments, or if you're hesitant uh, in uh, let's say developing your application within this, uh, let's say four days left <laughs> until the deadline with the Australia time. So we are happy to answer your all comments. I mean, I'm 24 seven for you just up until February 13. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But, uh, I'll be helping you develop your application throughout this process if you need. Uh, I mean, Guzel knows that um, I'm always uh, happy to like, even on Telegram or email, whatever. And Hannah knows I am very like, sometimes annoying saying like, Hannah, what is this? She's asking, well, how can I help her or him? And she's always like helpful and she never gets annoyed when we like email her uh, asking some support. So don't hesitate that. And I will be happy to see your names in the finalist list if you get them. Hopefully. <laughs> if, you, if you have no more questions, uh, our time is almost up.